Hello, good morning everyone. Thank you very much for attending this talk. This is a joint work that I have done with my colleagues, Professor Hafiz Malik at the University of Michigan Dearborn and Dr. Masood Abbas from G Global Research. The motivation for this work comes from the recent proliferation of hacking the ECUs and in-vehicle networks of vehicles. And as we all know, one of the very first famous instances of such attacks, in addition to the great work of Volosek and Miller, was a CAN-based attack on a Tesla vehicle that was basically demonstrated by Keen Lab. From that time, uh, there, are, there have been many other types of attacks, experimental attacks on uh, the in-vehicle network, such as this uh, man-in-the-middle attack on the flex ray of an Audi vehicle. In this work, we answer a very important question that once an attacker has made it to the last stage, what exactly are his capabilities? In particular, we address this, this question that what are the capabilities of an attacker who can directly control the frictional brake actuators while assuming that let's say the ABS has been turned off as well and see whether they can cause a serious physical threat in terms of inducing wheel lockups. To answer this question, we need to consider the traction dynamics of the vehicle, which is described by the dynamics of the forward speed of the vehicle, V dot, and the dynamics of the wheel slip, which is lambda dot. So as we can see from this dynamical equation, the speed dynamics depend on the slope of the road alpha. Uh, it depends on the friction coefficient of the tire road interaction, which is the function mu lambda, and some unknown disturbances delta v acting on the speed dynamics, such as wind gusts. Now, the dynamics of the wheel slip are directly affected by the brake actuator input, epsilon a, where the attacker can command epsilon a and through it, it can try to induce wheel lockup conditions. Here, epsilon delta w and epsilon delta v are also some unknown disturbance terms. Now, the question is, what about the knowledge of the adversary of the dynamics of the vehicle? In this uh, talk and paper, we assume that the attacker does not know anything about the unknown disturbances. And it has also got a very rough model of the tire road interaction characteristic function in terms of mu hat lambda and is even not aware of the brake actuator response delay and dead times. Regarding mu hat, which is the approximation of the friction coefficient, you will see in the simulations that even there is no need for having an approximate model and mu hat can be set equal to zero due to the interesting features of the attack policy that we will be discussing in a few moments. So with this description, we can now state the attack policy objective. Basically, the end goal of the adversary is to cause the states of the vehicle traction dynamics to converge to a lockup manifold, which is this manifold, where the wheel slip under the, the wheel slip would be become equal to one. Before proceeding further, let me make a quick remark on the classification of our attack using the control systems community. Uh, classification of attacks on cyber physical systems. As you can see from this uh, cubic uh, basically figure, our attack actually happens to lie at this point. So what does this mean? It means that the attacker has got full disruption resources because they can directly control the plant actuators and they have full disclosure resources because they can read the necessary state and information from the CAN bus. However, they have a very limited knowledge of the plant dynamics. Okay, so our attack policy has got two main components and the ma detailed mathematical expressions can be found in the accompanying paper. Basically, we have got a predefined time controller that under a perfect knowledge of the vehicle dynamics will guarantee that the states will converge to the lockup manifold in any finite time that is desired by the adversary. Now, this controller was originally proposed by Jimenez Rodriguez and his collaborators. And the second component of the attack policy is a nonlinear disturbance observer that compensates for the lack of adversarial knowledge about the dynamics of the vehicle and the tire road interaction characteristics. 
and this compensation comes through a feedforward uh, compensatory action that comes to the assistance of the output of the predefined time controller. Now, disturbance observers are very powerful tools for estimating the total effect of unknowns acting on a control system and have been used in both bipedal robotics and also design of robust zero dynamics attacks. To see how effective the proposed attack policy is, let's see some simulation results for two different driving scenarios on drag, dry asphalt and wet asphalt. So TC equal to 0.95 seconds is the finite time by which the adversary would like to make sure that the wheel gets locked. As it can be seen from the plot, the disturbance observer has been uh, basically successful in estimating the unknown disturbances that prevent the attacker control policy to achieve uh, the, the wheel lockup. Here are the uh, speed uh, versus time profile uh, wheel sleep versus time profile and wheel sleep versus speed uh, profile. As you can see, under a constant brake torque, the attacker has not been able to achieve wheel lockup. Now, under a predefined time controller where there is no disturbance observer compensation, again, the attacker will fail to achieve its wheel lockup objective. On the other hand, when the disturbance observer comes to the assistance of the predefined time controller, we see that the adversary can uh, easily achieve its objective and make the states of the vehicle to converge to the lockup manifold. Interestingly, on the wet asphalt, uh, the wheel lock is seen to be achieved in a faster manner. As we will see uh, in the coming talk in the afternoon, we will also analyze the effect of such wheel lockups on the lateral stability of the vehicle. Uh, now, I would like to thank you very much for your uh, basically attention and acknowledge this uh, National Science Foundation generous support. Thank you very much.